A very warm welcome to the fourth episode of the podcast of the World Wind Energy Association, Wind Power Around the World. Today we have a special episode. This time it's recorded from Abu Dhabi, where at the moment the IRENA General Assembly takes place. IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency, which was founded 15 years ago in Bonn, in Germany, and now has its main headquarters here in Abu Dhabi. It also has an office in Bonn, where we as World Energy Association have our headquarters. And today um, I will talk with um, one of our board members, with Monica Oliphant, who is representing us on the steering committee of the Arena Coalition for Action. But let's talk about these things one after the other so that people really understand what this is about. My name is Stefan Sänger. I'm Secretary General of the World Wind Energy Association. Monika, I'm very pleased that we can do this here together. Yes, me too. And yeah, you are our Vice President, but maybe to make people understand a little bit your background, I know you have a long history in renewable energy. If you just want to briefly introduce yourself. Well, very briefly, I started out quite a long time ago in renewable energy. I, uh, way back in the 1970s in solar, and uh, worked as a researcher at one of the universities in South Australia. Once funding for the solar research disappeared, I started on wind in an electricity utility uh, and uh, worked uh, in that area, wind and then solar and wind, which I always must work together. I believe uh, renewables working together is a very important uh, issue. So I've had a, a long history of working in both solar and wind over the years, predominantly in South Australia. That's impressive. You worked yeah. almost as long as I'm old, yes, <laughs> that's, that's. But certainly, not many people here in yes. in Abu Dhabi have such a long history. Um, you were also president of the International yes. Solar Energy Society. I think that is when we met for the first time, and I'm very happy that you are on our board. Um, now you followed also the 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 development of Irena, which was created at the initiative is now more than twenty years ago from Hermann Scheer, a German politician, yes. and. I believe that ISIS was also when you were president supporting this initiative. Yes. Uh, now uh, you are here and IRENA is a big organization with, I believe, 170 member countries. How is your, your perception of this history, this, which is now just 15 years? Well, I'd first like to mention that when I was president of uh, the International Solar Energy Society, I actually uh, presented Herman Scheer with the, uh, uh, the Bohr Award uh, for his work in uh, the predominantly feed-in tariff. Uh, but it has been a, a great opportunity to belong to the uh, IRENA and to come almost from the beginning, like uh, you, to the Coalition for Action, which has been uh, started off quite small, but now has been grown to, as you said, about 170 countries, oh, not countries, but uh, uh, groups, uh, uh, the uh, commercial interests, uh, NGOs, all sorts of different uh, uh, civil society uh, groups, whereas IRENA is for countries only. Yeah, that was an interesting discussion at the beginning because I, the United Nations, they have formal process how to involve non-governmental stakeholders yes. and IRENA is something like United Nations, but they are a, a actually to totally separate entity formally, but with I think 170 member countries and then they, when they started to discuss how to involve non-governmental stakeholders, yeah. private sector and civil society, etc. That was, it's now 10 years ago, and I believe we were both at that initial meeting yes. when there was uh, quite soon the discussion how to uh, not just involve and, and, and convince people renewables are good, but to uh, support the 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 active part so mobilize and support the societies and those companies yes 
I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think initially we started out with three groups, uh, community energy, uh, business, and towards 100% renewables. Over the last 10 years, these grew to six groups. And now you might like to say how it has now gone back to three main groups with quite a lot of tasks associated with let's, them. Let's, let's talk about this soon. Before, I think also important to understand for people, what is this coalition doing? Yes. Because there is actually some products coming out. There are these working groups, and I've been chairing the community energy group, as you just mentioned. Um, all these groups, they have certain activities, they have events, they mainly produce also papers, which might sound not so exciting, but I think it's really important because these papers then are uh, arena publications and the member states may read them. So that's important. No? For example, there's one white paper about uh, how to overcome barriers in financing community energy. Yes. I, I, uh, what I think was really good with uh, uh, white papers that come out are the case studies that are uh, involved with it. And my uh, where I live is in South Australia, and being very parochial South Australia, I managed to help get some quite good case studies for our state into some of them, mainly in, well, both in the uh, towards 100% and in the community energy. And it's lovely to be able to promote your region uh, within the community white papers. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we all feel that uh, these products are useful, but uh, they, I, I think the marketing side, of course, distributing the products, maybe there is just some, some room for improvement. We also talked about this at the this year's annual strategy meeting of the Coalition for Action, which took place just three days ago on Monday. Eh? We both were there. Yes, uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, good... Uh, it, the... Uh, Coalition for Action seem to be coming much more diverse in, into so many different topics. And the uh, 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 Coalition for Action uh, group that oversees us in, from IRENA have a limited resources. And I could see that they were having difficulty uh, coordinating all these groups. And as we have found in the community energy, they. Uh, there was quite delays in uh, uh, bringing out the white papers, but they have brought out quite a number of very good papers, but ours has been a little bit delayed. Mm -hmm. So that is still, I mean, we're still working with a, yes. an, an organization, an international organization, which has its formal requirements. Bureaucracy is there, yeah. that's normal. But I think we had a really interesting and a good meeting because now, as you already mentioned, there will be uh, some of these working groups will be merged. So there is in the future uh, three working groups which are have under their umbrella, then they call it task forces. One is on market and finance. Uh, one is empowering people in communities. And the third one is on towards 100% renewable energy yes. systems. Um, First, there. in addition, uh, there is the steering group, which is kind of overlooking the activities, and you've been re-elected. Yes, uh, yes. A of uh, each uh, group, uh, the like the steering group, which oversees uh, uh, all the others, we have a two-year, really a one-year uh, term, but can be extended to two. So I've already been on it for one year and have got an extension to two, which is really great. And I'm looking forward to uh, looking at the new structure and trying out new initiatives uh, in the coming year, which uh, I'm looking forward to. And we've got it within our steering group. It uh, covers all the different uh, regions, uh, throughout the world and in the different types of groups, again, civil society, NGOs, uh, business, and so on, mm -hmm. overseas. That's, that's really quite diverse. Now, yes, it say. is. And they certainly were looking for uh, gender equality. We're very equal. There's 
In fact, I think there are nine of us, probably six are women and three are men. Uh, so perhaps we've gone the other way, but that's, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, you're right. But I must also then admit that when I looked at the chairs of the working groups, that is still quite male dominated. Yeah. So I think in total, that the balances. numbers may, may be balanced. So. Yes. Yeah. But now we have this business and investor group, which is, of course, a lot. Uh, there's very big companies, international corporations working on that. I've always find it extremely important that the small, medium-sized companies, including community energy, local investors, which are responsible for a very large part of investment, actually, that they are also uh, visible and have a voice. And that's why I'm, I'm very glad that I am now able to oversee this bigger group, yes. which is not, not only for community energy, but also, for example, for aggregate renewables, yeah. in, a, in a sense of uh, rural renewables and the third group is is about 100 percent renewable energy yes. which i always have seen as one of uh, the, the second of the pillars of the world in the energy association because we need this paradigm um renewable energy only that that's the normal and everybody who does something else should justify itself so uh, that that's now one of the main working streams at this arena coalition that's quite an achievement isn't it it is. And uh, regular webinars are held uh, in the various uh, uh, groups. And so uh, for me, I've regularly attended not only community energy, but the agri renewables and the towards 100%. And you learn quite a lot. And you can participate if you would like to uh, in uh, the uh, group activities. And I would uh, encourage WWEA members, uh, we can uh, circulate when the, our um, uh, webinars occur mm -hmm. and you can uh, attend as well and get a, a, a good idea of what is happening. Hmm. Yeah, we will do that. Uh, we will inform the members and yes. tell them that that's a way how they can participate on this international level. Yes, might not be important for everyone because if you have a local cooperative, you might not be even interested. But yes. I think it's still important that some are participating and in, in bring this perspective to our industry. and just to know what's going on. Yeah. And I, I, I would like to say, after making a little bit of a, a slight criticism of the uh, IRENA uh, group, the, uh, the Coalition for Action uh, group of people are extremely hardworking, very helpful, and I enjoy working with them. And they don't have an easy time they because don't. they have all those different interests which are there. Yes. Uh, there are still some even companies which are in... Uh, how is it, how do they say they have assets in the fossil and nuclear yes. uh, sector? Yes. So even such organizations are directly, indirectly represented. And there is civil society like Climate Action Network, which is a very, yes. they're very strict on staying within the climate limits. And uh, they are, yeah, it's a big diversity and to, to balance yes. that is a, is a quite... It is, because tough. there are some very big groups that are involved, like Huawei. That was also interesting. There yes. were three uh, in that coalition meeting yes. on Monday, three Chinese uh, companies. There was one was Cattle, which is yes. I think the biggest the battery, battery manufacturer. Uh, there was Chinko Solar, one yep. of the big PV manufacturers. And, and the third one was Huawei. Huawei. Yes. So not many companies were there, but three Chinese. Yes. And certainly, we've heard a, a lot of what the Chinese are doing, and it's certainly impressive. Yeah. And also interesting, there came some, when we talked about 100%, there were some voices saying, they called it, we should be realistic. Yes. Which I understood as 100% might not be realistic, so we shouldn't emphasize it too much. But at the end, and these right Chinese companies support the 100%, interestingly, uh, it was we succeeded that hundred percent stays as an important message. Yes, uh, yes, and uh, uh, tripling of renewables by twenty thirty. They felt that that was uh, an achievable goal. Yeah, even there is one CEO of a Chinese wind company saying that that's business as usual. It's not overly ambitious. Yes, and you look at the growth rates. That was what the, the statement was. But what I found really uh, also interesting, worthwhile to mention. 
uh, was the statements made by the director general at yes. the meeting on Monday. Uh, he made two remarkable statements in, in my in my perception. You, you know what I'm referring to. Are you referring to the nuclear one as one of them? One one was that. Yes. Yeah, I thought that was a good, a good statement in that uh, in the last seven years the amount of nuclear worldwide seventy that like seventy years. Yes is uh, ju uh, just the same or less than one year of renewable energy growth. The world, mankind managed, in, since nuclear power is there, yeah. only to, to, to install the amount that we made as renewables in a year. And he was very kind of, he re had made that statement uh, in public before. And and the other statement, were, that's what we were, I think as a coalition had really a positive impact. He announced that Arena would do 100% renewable energy scenario. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, in the towards 100% renewables, they were doing 100% scenarios, mm -hmm. and uh, there. This must be an update of the because it they did look at the Arena scenario, but this must be a an update on that. Yeah, I I brought this question up a couple of years ago, and that was not on that level of the top level of IRENA, but the answer at that time was we don't have a mandate for 100% renewable energy, mm -hmm. which was not really uh, the appropriate answer because developing a scenario is not saying uh, you must do 100%, but just checking is it be feasible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Francesco said very clearly that IRENA will now, I mean, there are many scenarios uh, with 100% renewables, Energy Watch Group with, uh, uh, from some universities, um, we have from Sydney, the university yes. has done that. University of Technology, Sydney, yes. And But if Irina does it as well, I think it will add to this momentum. Of the yes. uh, actually, uh, I was quite impressed with some of the assembly talks. In particular, I went to the SIDS, that which is the Small Island Developing States meeting, in which their headline statement was... 1.5 to survive, which is very important for smaller islands. Although realistically, we see now that that is uh, not enough. I mean, even not. out of reach. Now. Yes. So we have the, yes. the, the scale. And ironically, we had the 100% public-private dialogue meeting the day before yesterday when we as the Coalition for Action presented our kind of findings to governments. So that's why it's called public-private dialogue. And then there was an introduction of a summary of the 100% scenarios. And then some governments started to, to talk and some an interesting statement, for example, from Egypt, they didn't say that's something we don't consider, but they said, yeah, but that requires that we need to have this and this and this. Yeah. Tell them about the rain during that session, which was very funny. Yeah, that was what I also wanted to say, because somehow there were some small doubts in, in the room. And suddenly, I think it was uh, the, the strongest rainfall ever in the UAE, at least in decades. Uh, we heard just thunder and strong rain, even in this luxury hotel. It's really very luxury hotel. Yeah, one of the best hotels of the UAE, probably. Yes. And then uh, we were sitting next to each other. Yes. And suddenly I was in this, uh, without any windows, meeting room, and I felt some raindrops. And we saw it coming down the wall. And then it poured down. We had to like move. waterfalls at several yes. several places in the room. And then they had to stop the meeting in yes. Africa, the room. Yes. Certainly a sign of climate change. It was somehow the right conclusion yes. for the session. We don't yeah. need to argue anymore. We don't need to discuss. We need to do it now. And they had to act because all the electronic equipment in the room, which somehow for me was sim symbolic for how we need to act, they had just to say, people, you move, and we need to take these things out. Otherwise, yes. it's all destroyed from the rain. Yes. yes. Yeah, so... Uh, now we have really, I think, uh, successful meetings. Let's also mention as well the Energy Association, we were re really, and we still are very good represented because beside from us, yes. uh, also Irfan Mirza, our yeah. president was there and uh, also was that was, I think, also well received and making strong statements. 
and in the Coalition for Action, um, one of our vice presidents, Ibrahim Tokola from Mali, yes. he also took over a role as the coordinator of the agriculture remarks. I think we were the strongest delegation there in the coalition. Probably, yes, on, on the Monday with four people and all of them actively contributing, yes. not just sitting there. That's around. right, yes. So from, I think, World Wind Energy Association perspective, and I always see us as part of, of course, of an alliance and you're the organization you previously chaired, ISIS and others, still uh, uh, working very closely for the same goals. Yes. I think we, we really could make some things. I think uh, we did. And uh, uh, the assembly at, uh, uh, the co uh, at the Fort Irena is really quite an interesting one in which there's so many different countries uh, uh, involved. And there's also a youth delegation in which there were a hundred youths uh, uh, invited to attend, 50 from the UAE and 50 from around the world. And there were as a, um, uh, an initiative they called for uh, submissions for people to join, mm -hmm. and there were something like, I think it was 27,000 people, young people, wanted to join wow. the oh, Youth Coalition. Okay. And uh, it was quite a big job to whittle them down. The first half of them were reduced to around about 2,000 or so by looking who had made chat GPT applications. And those were immediately removed. Yeah, yeah. No, that uh, Irina really tries to be inclusive. Yes. Uh, let's say we, we already talked about the condition and then there was this youth in Irina. I think youth, that's really, of course, cool, key because yes, that's, one uh, day we will not be there anymore and the future is with the young people. So yes. it's very important. But there was also, I, I was there after this flood in the in the meeting room um, I think they had to improvise a little bit, but there was also a reception about uh, women in diplomacy, so oh, the role yes. of women in, yeah. in the energy sector, which is traditionally a male yes. sector. No? Yes, there was quite a large group of uh, uh, women there, and uh, they talked quite eloquently. There was quite a very interesting talk from uh, a woman in Numibia telling about the, the how they democratically elected uh, uh, members of parliament and it, it and uh, the, youth, the young woman youth delegate uh, was there and I being from Australia sat with the Australian delegate and there was a one from Yemen it was just such an inclusive event and people talking about their experiences and uh, how they felt things should develop in future. So I think what people now understand is that ARENA is really a, an important meeting place with yeah. connecting governments also with the non-governmental and different uh, societal stakeholders. Now, some people are asking, what's the practical benefit of having ARENA? What, what, uh, how does it make a difference? It's another organization. How would you answer this question? Uh, yes, one, uh, because there are so many uh, uh, groups and so, but because uh, IRENA is different because it uh, represents both countries from all around the world. And uh, they talk about their programs and we get to learn what's happening in all around the world in renewables and a lot talk about cooperation lots talk about the problems of financing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and they learn from each other where the areas of finance can uh, be and because there is input from the coalition which is not uh, a, a government. I think it is the transfer of ideas from all around the world in the renewable sector, which has increased uh, uh, to talk quite a lot about hydrogen and transport and agriculture as well as, uh, and the, to do, this time there was quite an emphasis on Africa uh, too. Uh, so we learn what the problems are and how they should be possibly help to solve them. Yeah, I think there are different levels where ARENA is not yeah. working. One is this where really ARENA is also 
even developing programs for governments, no? especially in the so-called yes. developing countries where they are helping to formulate policies. And that's why it's important that, for example, we can give our input so that these yes. government, the, 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 the policies are then based on also, for example, inclusive approaches. But there's also, I, I see now, uh, really an, an important role, which is maybe more a public role, but ARENA at, for example, the UN climate change conferences, Irina is it has really now a role of shaping, I'd say, the debate because they they can say um, if if the Irina Director General says we're discussing hundred percent renewables, whether it's feasible or not, that of course is different from when we as non governmental stakeholders make a press release and say hundred percent, let's do that. Yes, yeah, I, I think that is true, and uh, as a, a Growth of uh, renewables is always uh, shown, and uh, uh, it is growing, but not fast enough. But the role of China in the world of renewables was very much highlighted, and uh, you've mentioned uh, that. And of course, uh, in terms of supply chain, a lot of countries are very conscious of uh, uh, being dependent on a single source. So mm -hmm. it gives them a, uh, grounds for putting more effort into their own country initiatives. But again, I mean, the, the companies which were at the Coalition for Action, uh, those who were really without doubt positive, the yeah. big Chinese companies, and we heard, I don't need to, to name them now, but is rather, uh, let's be realistic, these are European. So they're kind of yes. still slowing down. That's, that's, that's yes. Did you notice any other, like, uh, we know that they're indirectly, of course, at these meetings now, also the nuclear and fossil fuel interests are there. Uh, have you seen them? No, I didn't notice them at the assembly, but afterwards we went to the, world i always forget future energy future and there uh where all the latest uh developments uh expo is there were two stands one from korea and one from uh, uh edf which uh, uh pronounced that they had small modular reactors which really is not uh uh, tr true. One of uh, my friends went up and asked uh, the uh, about them, and uh, initially, having said that they uh, were in existence, uh, admitted that this was not true. But we did also see new developments in storage that diversify from just uh, batteries and uh, hydro to compressed air. And that was rather an interesting. That uh, was also uh, a Chinese company. Yes. Well, for me, was that some may think this is ridiculously small, but what I find uh, really amazing is that this is flexible it's PV big, module, yes. which is the size of a normal module, just only it's actually two millimeters thin. Mm -hmm. And it you can use it like a, it's plastic. You can put it everywhere, uh, and and at a price which they told us is even below the uh, the normal modules. They may yes. last a little bit shorter. That's what they also told us, but yes. not substantially less. Uh, so that such innovation is it's really yes. encouraging to see. It weighs six kilograms. You could hang it from a balcony. Uh, which would be a way in high-rise flats to put it uh, mm. uh, on your balcony, which I thought was a very good idea. So I, I'd say we both feel obviously the same. We have similar uh, conclusion. This has been an encouraging yes. uh, assembly, the 14th arena assembly, so the 14th time that all the members are meeting, um, uh, where we probably go back. And where I, I have a, a task list. You... Probably yeah. also will follow up some. Yes, I will. Yes. But uh, don't ask me what they are. I haven't decided yet. But I have got copious notes and I will go through them and, uh, and uh, look because I would like to make a difference in the steering committee for my last year and the coalition for action. I, I will still stay in, uh, in it and uh, attend and listen to the webinars. But the. Uh, my last year on the steering committee, I want to make a difference. When when you now look at Irina and the situation, what would you see as the main task for Irina? 
I was Irina or the coalition? Well, Irina first. Uh, yes, I, I think to make a difference, uh, they put out so many publications. If you go to the website and go to publications, almost weekly there is a, a new one. The latest is on geopolitics and renewables, which is a very interesting topic. But, uh, and I'm really not sure uh, how one, because people have a limited time, they can't read so much. How do we get this information that they are uh, uh, accumulated? How do we get it out to make it more useful? And uh, I think that's going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. So Arena should think about how to bring the main messages to the, to yes. the global audience. Because I don't know that all that many people know about Irina. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's probably true. And, and uh, yeah, um, I'd say, yeah, that's, that's certainly, uh, I share that with you. Uh, it's very bureaucratic now. Yeah. Uh, so, but of course, also Irina has to answer many small questions. So that's also their role. But the big questions are there and, uh, um, in, in the case, and I always wonder, is the climate uh, arena, the the arena, the right place? Or should arena, or will arena maybe even become, and we see this meeting here growing, it's yes. almost like COP size. Yes. Uh, will this have its own kind of development, which even aside from the climate discussion has its own life? Yes. Uh, because you have to give the opportunity to the various companies that attend to speak. And therefore, because there's so many, they're only given a very short time. And there's very little that you can say. And there's often a big repetition in uh, uh, what, what is said. So that's so how when you deal with it. You have these now 50 years of experience working for renewables. Well, are after this, of course, we have seen many things. Um, are you traveling back to Australia more encouraged than before? Or you say, okay, there's a very small progress, but there's some progress. What is your, what's your kind of now uh, looking into the future? Well, uh, I must say when I started, uh, uh, solar was for uh, a niche market on satellites and uh, uh or solar water heaters and wind was for water pumping on farms and uh, people like me who started out were called tree huggers. Now I wouldn't have imagined how it has grown and it is accelerating from year to year and I know it isn't fast enough but it, we do need to find the best way to integrate uh, this, these variable renewables into our grids and into our lifestyle, into a reliable, sustainable way. It's no longer, uh, although some people still see it, that you need base load. You don't really need base load. You can have renewables plus storage, and it doesn't have to be hydro. It can be batteries or perhaps compressed air in the future. Uh, and all these new developments are coming apace, and it saddens me that this isn't fast enough. But if it is faster, we need to have a mechanism of uh, introducing them, both on the work front, as mm. the so-called just transition, and on the technical, to integrate them into our general life. So you are, on the one hand, just your kind of impressed yourself yes. by the progress, but you say we still need to push to have yes. to make it faster. Yes. So we still have a role to play. We do, uh, that is uh, good. And my role seems to be more on uh, uh, encouraging the youth uh, and uh, telling the history. Which is a very nice one, yes. Yes. I think that's, that's really something that uh, is, is also has an impact. But Monica, thank you for spending the time we had a wonderful time Thank i think you. here yes it was good and uh with this let's say uh, thank you to our audience for listening yes thank and, you and uh, um yeah with this goodbye from abu dhabi and the next recording okay. will 
again be done from at least part of one part from Bonn and from another part of the world. Good. Goodbye. Bye.